Hello, my name is Stephanie Stahl and I am a full-time author and illustrator. If you are new to my channel and you want tips about self-publishing, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see every single time I post a new video. Also, if you are looking for additional tips and tricks about self-publishing, including documents, workshops, and more, go over to patreon.com slash bethanystahl and check that out where I have a ton more resources just for Patreon members. So today we're going to be covering hidden features within AMS. And these features aren't necessarily hidden, but they were hidden from me and my understanding of the program for quite a while because they're not actively accessible where you would think you could find more information. So with a little bit of digging, I found more features that are really beneficial. So we're going to be going over those today. I know I said we were going to do a Q&A today. However, I did not get questions. So I have no questions to answer. However, I am still having my workshop squad do a live stream focused on AMS ads. That is on June 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you do have questions and you want to join into that, I'm going to be going over how I find even more keywords with more keyword finders and answering any questions and going over the program again as well as a flow chart of how I figure out what to do next. So if that interests you and you still do have questions head over and join the workshop squad. All right so we are in one of my ads right now and this ad is doing really well. It has a very low ACOS, I'm spending very little, and I'm making lots of sales, which is really good. So we've already went over how to create the ads, how to fine tune the ads and make sure they're performing really well. And now let's learn how to look at all these other side things over here so we can figure out what is going on with the ad, how can we get more information from it, and how can we continue to improve with other ad sets? So right now we're on this ads tab. If we go to placements, we can now change how we feel about some of this other stuff. So do we want to pay more to be on the top of the page? Do we want to pay more to be on product pages? So how we had that up and down bid option when we created our ad, we can actually change that in here if the ad's doing really well. So I know, wow, okay, top of the search page, I've got a really low ACS on that. Sure, you can go ahead and spend 10% more. And then I can let that happen. Or if I'm still not comfortable with that, I will say, yeah, no, don't worry about that. You don't have to do any of it. I can do 0%, I can do 1%, I can do 2%. So whatever you feel is comfortable, you can do. So here on the targeting tab is where we'll see all of the keywords listed. We can see how much we're bidding, how much we're spending, and everything of that sort. So this is going to be the place where you fine tune your ad. Now, negative targeting is something I don't use personally. However, you are definitely able to use that. So what negative targeting is, is when you have a keyword that keeps coming up for your book, but it's not performing well. It is not helping your sales. It is not doing any good for you. It is only spending money. What you can do is add in a negative keyword here and it will stop targeting that keyword. So this may happen. I haven't found the need to use negative keywords. Perhaps I will as I go more into ads in the future. But for the past few years, my ads have done really well and I haven't had to use any negative keywords. But it does help you fine tune things. So if you're really into fine tuning and perfecting your ads, this may be something you want to look into and play with. Now this search terms tab is really cool. What this tab tells you is what keywords are customers actually typing in to find your book. So these right here are what they are typing into that Amazon search bar to find me. And these keywords right here are what Amazon recommends you put into your ads keywords. So if you don't already have these, definitely put them in. What you can do over here is click these 
and add the keyword. Or you can add it as a negative keyword. Again, if people are searching for something and they are clicking on it a lot and it's not turning into sales, you can go ahead and put that back. And you can see this one right here. I already have this keyword in my campaign, but all these others, I don't. And this keyword that everybody's searching for the most right here that has a really good ACOS is actually not one of my keywords. So that is really good information for me to, to use that and further my campaign. Now here in campaign settings, I can rename my campaign name if I decided, oh, I named it something crazy. I don't know what I was thinking and I have no idea what this ad means. I can always change it. I can change the portfolio here. I can keep it active or pause it. And then I can put an end date in here. Typically, I don't put an end date. If I do put an end date, um, it's something that I keep extending sometimes ads will stop performing and if you put in an end date or you change a few things around it sort of reactivates the ad a little bit because there's new settings and you're tweaking it so if your ad does go dead you may want to schedule an end date just to try and get the ad running again i can change my default bid my daily budget and then any of these i can change which is really cool so I don't want you to create an ad and be worried that, oh no, I picked a setting and now I'm locked into it. I just did all that work creating an ad and I picked something wrong. Don't worry about it. Just come into these settings and you can change absolutely everything, which is great. And this history tab just tells you what you've done, what you've added, and the day and time. So if you're curious about what you've done to the ad in the last 30 days or the last lifetime of the ad, you can change the range here. You can see what have you changed, what have you added, and has it helped, has it worsened it. So this is really good information. And I honestly never really paid attention to those tabs existing when I first started. I didn't know what they really meant, and so I ignored them and only used the tab, the targeting tab, that I knew how to use. So I do encourage you all to dive deep within your ads and really keep track of what is working for you and what isn't because this is the part that makes or breaks a book's success and I have said before that ads do only account for 30% or less of my sales and honestly lately they've been only about 5 to 10% of my sales as time goes on, more people will find them, but the advertising is what is that backbone that brings you to new people and brings your book to new readers' eyes and hands. So that is what you really want to focus on is just finding new people. And ads have made a world of difference for my career. My full-time authorship career did not start until I started advertising my book. And now that I started advertising my books, now they're advertising themselves. They're just going and going and people are sharing them and this and that. And it has this huge butterfly effect of when you start one ad, even if you only sell to one person, that one person can contribute to 10 organic sales. So never count ads out. I know it's overwhelming and I know a lot of you, I've been talking to you through this ads course in the chats and I've gotten a few messages on Patreon from you all that are really hesitant to start the ads. Please don't be hesitant. Keep your bids low, keep your daily budgets at $5 or less. You will not spend that full $5. I promise I've never spent a full $5. I have set my ads as high as a few hundred dollars per day just to see what would happen. And they did not spend anywhere near that. So don't be afraid to play around. It will be okay. Have just a little bit of money set aside. I think at first I was spending $20 to $50 a month on ads, but they were profitable. So you have to remember I was making all that money back. I've never ever been in the hole with my business ever. So I've never been unprofitable. And that's something that's really, really important to me is I don't allow myself to ever become unprofitable because 
then I can't afford to do this. So I always have been in the green from day one. So please make sure you guys are taking it slow and jumping into it. And if ads don't work, then there may be something else that you need to tweak with your book. And I will address all of that in the live stream workshop. So I hope this video has helped. I hope you've enjoyed this ads course. And I really encourage you all to try it out. And I wish you the best of success with your books. I am so proud of all the books I've seen that you all have shared with me. I cannot believe how amazing of authors are listening to this. You guys are blowing my mind with all of your talent. So thank you for joining me and looking into ads. I wish you so much luck and if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up it really helps and i will see you all next time happy publishing if you are looking for more information about publishing go over to bethanystall.com classes to see a huge collection of information that i have gathered for you separated out into topics now most of these classes are free to access but there are a few that are exclusive to my self pub patrons if you do want to join that go over to patreon.com bethanystall where you can join and get access to the classes as well as other behind the scenes tips tricks and documents that are exclusive to that squad. If you are trying to get into contact with me to ask questions, the best place to do that would be Patreon. I do see all of those messages and comments first, and I am able to reply to those almost immediately. So that is the best place for more individualized help. I hope this video has helped, and I will see you all next time.